When it comes to learning to ride off-road well, sitting down technique and flat corner technique are really foundational skills that I think are quite often overlooked or misunderstood. This week on Mini Tip Monday, I'm gonna go through the basics of sitting down on your bike properly, what you should be looking to achieve in the long run, and I'm gonna do it a little bit differently to how we've done Mini Tip Monday in the past. Rather than me just telling you, I'm gonna teach my girlfriend Lucy here hey. how to go through the process of learning to ride flat corners well, sitting down well, and understanding what she should be trying to achieve so that you can see what those progressions look like as well. Welcome back to Mini Tip Monday. When it comes to learning to sit down and then learning to do flat corners well off-road, I think it's like anything we learn with riding dirt bikes or pretty much any other skill, you wanna get your foundation stuff sorted first. So you wanna make sure that your body parts are in the right position so that when I then start adding things into that mix, say talking about making it turn well, where your body should move to, you're in the right position to start with. We do the same thing when we learn to stand up off-road, right? Like the, the video we made called Basic Standing Position was about how you should start, not how you should finish. If you start in a good place, you'll end up in a good place. That's a Ryan Hughes quote. If you haven't come across him yet and you're into dirt bike riding, you should watch his videos. They're very good. He's a bit crazy, but his videos are great. So what we're gonna talk about first is where all the parts of our body should be and how they should interact with the bike. So the first part, exactly the same as I think it should be done with standing position, is where our feet should be on the foot pegs and how that interaction should look. I think, especially if you're coming from road riding, foot position and just general riding is not that talked about, but I think it's really important when we ride off road and especially when we sit down. So the first part is, and it's really simple, toes tucked in and the ball of your foot on the front edge of the foot peg. Those two things give you really good placement of your foot, which gives you good power over the foot peg. So when you wanna press on it, you can, which becomes more important the better you get at cornering. And when we transition from sitting to standing, it also works really well. It lets us get in the best position and move quickest between the two. The second part is where we sit on the seat. So. The seat on a dirt bike is really long and I think it's really common. I think even when you started riding, you did this a little bit and we talked about it straight away, didn't we? That your bum doesn't go in the middle of the seat. It definitely doesn't go where it feels comfortable. It feels comfortable about here normally. Some people like to even go further back and they get super excited by how straight they can get their arms, but it doesn't give us any control. You can see when I sit here, the shock goes up and down really easily, but the fork does nothing because there's no weight on it. The more I sit back on the shock, the less able the bike is to turn. So we want our weight square in between the axles for nice even pressure on the wheels. When we're in that position, we can then determine what happens. We can add more weight forwards, more weight backwards using our head. But if we're sat back here, it doesn't matter how much I lean forwards, I can lean right forwards like this, it looks goofy, but it doesn't give any weight pressure to the front wheel. So the middle of the bike is typically on a dirt bike over the foot pegs. That position right there, my kind of, if you cut a line in the middle of me, it would go straight down to the foot peg there. I think that's about the right position to start from. You can make other decisions afterwards as to exactly how you fine tune it, but that's the great position to start from. The next part, and for me, probably the most underrated part of good sitting position is our hands and how they interact with the handlebars. And it's the same theory we talked about when we talked about great basic standing position. Your hands need to regrip the handlebars from what feels comfortable to what allows us to put downward pressure on them. What makes a bike turn when we're sat down off-road is us pushing down on the handlebar. So if I'm going in a straight line and I wanna go left, I push down a little bit on the left side, it'll all lean left. And so to do that, we need our hands on top of the handlebars. You can't do this if your elbows are tucked in. It doesn't really work. You end up looking like a, I don't even know what creature this is, but you, it looks weird, it's uncomfortable. So we want our arms to come out a little bit and our hands to be on top of the handlebars. So we're gonna grip with these two fingers or these three fingers 
and the other one covers the controls. And that gives us the ability to make like really good downward pressure and let the bike lean over and for us to counteract that by going the other way, but still giving us control. So those are the three points. Balls of the feet on the foot pegs, great starting position. The limit there might be your own mobility. You might find some people's feet want to turn out. Some people don't have super mobile ankles, so that might change a little bit, but that's the gold standard. That's the goal is to be there. Mm -hmm. Weight in the middle of the bike, not the middle of the seat. Hands on top of the handlebars. Great foundational starting points. Very good. Let's go. You happy to do some more riding? Yeah. So we've got a nice figure of eight laid out. I think it's a perfect teaching exercise for this. Really simple. We're just going to work on getting good riding position sorted first. Then we're going to talk about how to make the bike turn better and what your position transitions to when you go into a corner. Sound good? Yeah. Sweet. Helmet on. Let's go. Uh, one thing we talked about before but I forgot to mention was about how your back and your hips are on the seat. So if you pivot your pelvis forwards like you're riding English horse riding, that's it. The more you do that, the more you can shimmy your bum backwards a little bit. So shimmy backwards a tiny bit. That's it, because when you do that, it moves your center of gravity forwards. So it's kind of a bit more of an active position. And then with your hands, uh, so I would say your hands need to come on top of the handlebars a little bit more, not so high, just there, it's perfect. That's exactly right. That position is the perfect kind of, I'm gonna be positive about my riding sat down position. Sound good? Yeah. Feel weird? Well, I hope I can, can maintain this. Well, I don't think I will. Well, you can ride away from there. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it, start it up and ride away and then start doing some laps and we'll, we'll right. film it and then you can see it. <laughs> okay. Off we go. We just had a quick look back at the footage so that Lucy can see how her hand position and her arms have changed as she's gone through the like a few laps of riding and over time it starts to kind of drop down and tuck in. So to help kind of understand, uh, I showed her the footage and now I'm gonna do it the way I would do it, which I think is pretty much the correct way so that she can see how my hands are on the bike and how that looks in comparison, so she's got something to kind of aim for, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna jump on the bike and uh, yeah, there we go. So we just watched the footage back. What was the biggest thing that you noticed in the difference between like the way I was doing it and the way you were doing it? So your arms were like, your elbows were definitely actively up, especially in the corner where I think, cause I'm still a bit nervous in corners, I tend to like tuck in. Mm -hmm. It's like a sort of, I don't know, self-preservation thing. And so I need to actively like think about that in the corner specifically. So I think that's a really good way of kind of describing it is, you, you have to actively over exaggerate it to end up in the right position because it will feel super weird to be there. So I think we should do a couple more laps. Uh, and I think one other thing that will help quite a lot with this is to deliberately in the straighter sections between the two corners to just regrip the handlebars so that if you end up in that off position, you can kind of go light, get your hands like on top again and start that process again. So you just start to make some habit out of it really and get comfortable with how weird it feels to be in that kind of swan position. Yeah, okay. Sweet, All right, let's go. Okay. I found 
found it quite hard. Okay. How come? Um, what was hard about it? Because I think like actively trying to keep my arms like up, something it kind of felt like it was aching a bit like under there. But yeah. it just I don't know. It felt like I was being like a chicken around the corners, like it literally. So, like... Uh, <laughs> I'll show you the video in a sec, but okay. it looks a hundred times better. Oh, okay. You look way, way, way more like your arms are in the right position. So I think there's a, a little bit of this where it's a microcosm of, of stress that you don't normally get when you're riding. Like it's very rare where you go around the corner in the same position at the same speed and have your arms locked in the same position for a long period of time. Like as you start to ride more in the real world and less in like this training environment, you don't have that same, I've got to hold my arms up here for a really long time. You, like it aches. Like if I did yeah. 20 laps, my shoulders would start to ache because I'm holding them up a lot. Do you know, it's not natural. Okay. But as I said, like it looks way better. Um, it's much more in the position you should be in. Um, your arms are up much better. It dropped a little bit at the end, but I think it looked like your arms got tired. Yeah. So, um, I'll quickly show you the footage. We can talk about like what's good, uh, and then we'll move on to the next bit because I think you're ready for it. Okay. Cool. Cool. I think you're now at the point where we can start to add in a little bit more about actual cornering theory and how we like make a bike turn on the flat well, and the position we need to go in and why. The reason we didn't do this at the start is because I don't think you can do this well until you start to get the hang of what it feels like for your body to be in the right position. So the first thing, and if we look back at the footage of me doing the corners, you'll notice is that our bum has to move on the seat when we go around a corner. What you're trying to do with your hands in this upward position is to turn in the direction we want to go. You then have the capacity to push on the handlebar. So if I want to go around a left-hand turn, I push left which leans the bike over like this. Yep. But if I'm still square in the middle of the seat, I don't have the best grip and I don't have the best balance. And I don't have my body in the best position to allow the bike to lean further. The only way to go around a flatter corner faster is to lean over more. But to counteract all those forces that we've got, we have to move our body a little bit. So we are going to hop on the way into the corner our bum's going to be in this position. You're going to pick your bum up slightly and move it over ever so slightly. And what you're looking for really is the edge of the seat, this edge here, to be ever so slightly in the crack of your butt. <laughs> There's no nice way to say that. It goes in the crack of your butt. But to get cool. there, you have to pick your bum up and move it slightly which is where our feet being in a great position helps massively. If you're lazy with your feet, you're kind of riding along like this, it's harder. If you're here, it's much easier to be fluid and move with it. So then you end up in this position, like that. So my butt is on the, on the my butt crack is on that square edge of the seat and my shoulders and elbows are in this position. And that gives us the most control over the bike. It puts the most grip through the tires and allows us to move. Now, people who have watched a lot of gone, what's your question? What happens if you don't move your body weight and you stay where you are in the corner? You can only lean so far. You topple over. It's the same so you're as- You're acting as a counterbalance. You're acting for... as a counterbalance and a grip creator for the tires. Okay. So what, but the other thing that you're allowing yourself to do is actually physically let the bike lean over. So what happens when you lean a bike over like this, if I'm still in the middle, obviously I start to fall with it, but also I can't let it lean over anymore because I'm just in the wrong position to do so. Now, those that, of you that are watching this, I'm sure there's going to be people who have already written in the comments at this point in the video, well, you should be sticking your leg out. This is like a, another one of those things where you have to understand why you take your leg off the foot peg in the first place. The only real reason that you ever take your feet off the foot pegs is to get them out of the way. So when you want to lean a bike over, there becomes a point where having your inside foot, so if I'm going around a left-hand corner, having my left foot on the foot peg or right on the right foot peg, there becomes a point where it's in the way and it doesn't let you move far enough to the outside of the bike to work like a counterbalance. So then we take it off the foot peg. 
If you're in a rutted corner, you take it off to get it out of the way. That is all it's doing when it's up off the ground. A little bit, it can act as like a safety net, but you've got most control over the bike when you've got most contact with it. So if your feet are on the foot pegs, you've got something to hold it with and to stop it moving and so on. When you take your feet off, you lose a little bit of that. And so that's the only reason you really want to take your feet off the foot pegs. If you watch super high level racers, they will do their absolute best to have their feet on the foot pegs at all times because it gives them that control. So the more we lean it over, you might find that to get yourself further outside, you have to take your inside foot off the foot peg. I'm fine with that, no problem with it. But as long as it's coming off for a good reason and then in reverse, once you don't need it off the foot peg to get out the way anymore, it just goes back on. How are you finding it? Yeah, I find like there's a lot to remember. Um, and if I don't actively think about it, I find myself going back into the position of like, sitting a bit further back, hollowing my back out and not thinking about my arms, which obviously doesn't help. So I've got to actively remember or like remind myself to like sit sort of with a, I don't know what you call that, an arch back, kind of a... Rotated hips? Yeah, rotated hips, yeah. And, and the arms out because it actually feels a lot smoother and less like I'm actually on the front wheel, like the weight on the front wheel. And when I am in this position, even though you think that I'm more on the front wheel, I don't know, that's a terrible explanation, but it feels better, but there's a lot to think about. <laughs> awesome. Well, it's true. Yeah. There is a lot to think about, but it looks much better. Thank you. We've been riding around in circles. Well, you've been riding around in circles for about two hours now. Yep. Um, in the sunshine. What do you think is the most valuable bit that you've learned from what we've done today? Um, probably arm position and like not letting your elbows like naturally fall back in. Okay. Um, I think that really helped me feel, even like made the corners feel like smoother. Yeah. Um, and just remembering, like you say, when you're back on the straight to kind of re-grip, make sure your hands are on top of the handlebars. Um, and yeah, that analogy of like, do it, uh, what's it called? Pulling the archery. It. Yeah, yeah, I've never done it in my life, but I felt like I... It... Now you could be pro. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was, yeah, arm position, I think was key for me. Okay. We talked really briefly about it and we didn't, we didn't really cover it that much, uh, but about taking your inside foot off. Um, it's one mm. of the things that is kind of synonymized with off-road riding. When you go around a corner, you take your foot off the inside but we kind of talked about it in a, in a reverse way of only do it if you need to. When you tried it, how did it feel? Um, so first of all, it felt a bit awkward and a bit gangly because I didn't quite know where to put it and I wasn't leaning the bike over far over enough to feel the benefit of it. But mm -hmm. when we started to, we did it off camera, but just go around in really tight circles, it was actually helpful to lift it like off the peg and forward in order to lean the bike over but and not have your legs stuck out where it was then weighting the inside and, and dragging you over yeah um so it was really helpful to actually understand why you would put your foot out like the reasoning for it and not just a style thing because you see other riders do it yeah which is like the amount of knowledge i had before today okay awesome well i think that's all that's uh probably summed it up pretty well really Today, in the last two and a half hours that we've made this video, and we've kind of been teaching Lucy uh, a little bit more about improving her basic sitting position and her basic cornering technique. It's important to also understand that this is not, this is not the only way to go around a corner. And that unfortunately for you and everyone else that starts out in the position where you're kind of watching videos like this, Cornering technique is really complicated. It's the most important part of riding a motorcycle, I think, for, for doing it well, is how well you go around corners, especially if you're into dirt bikes and you want to get better on them. It's a really complicated process, but everything comes from what we've covered today. Uh, being in the right position, if, you're, if you start there, you can go a long way. If you normally watch these videos because you're like into adventure bikes and you, you're kind of interested in dual sport bikes, 
This technique applies the same on adventure bikes, but the main reason we don't do that much sitting down on adventure bikes is you're just too far back on the bike. You can't get in front of the foot pegs to be in a good position, so it's hard to do it. But if you choose to sit down for any reason, the technique's all the same, it works the same. Uh, so when we go out on adventure bikes, it'll, it'll be the same. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. This is a little bit different to how many Tip Mondays have been in the past. I hope you've enjoyed it uh, and the format is kind of uh, helpful for understanding the process that you're going to go through when you learn something new. Um, I've enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. And if you want to watch more of these, this series is predominantly something we do on Patreon. So. Uh, we make these videos in a series format on Patreon where they come out pretty much every week uh, on a Monday because it's Mini Tip Monday. And then we follow that up by releasing them sporadically on other platforms. If you want to help support the channel, we also have an awesome online shop where we sell things that we really believe are great products, including Fox Kit and a few other bits like that, stickers and T-shirts and just nice stuff in general. So, yeah, you can find that link in the description below. And otherwise, thanks for watching and remember... Life's better when you're riding.